second introduction and thank you organizers for letting me speak on demodex plethoro creative conjunctivitis which has been briefly discussed by both dr ahuja and dr aditi uh, so so at this point i'll say that we all know that tiny mites live in our eyelashes yes this is called demodex it's the most common permanent ectoparasite in humans belongs to the class arachnid order acarnia and demodex the word comes from demos wax or fat dex insect and we have two species demodex folliculorum which is primarily found at the base of eyelashes and demodex brevis which inhabit the mebovian glands but what this paper also says is that these demodex they actually help keep your eye clean so let me take you to a few clinical scenarios This is a 19-year-old female with multiple episodes of red eyes. Frequent prescriptions of steroid eye drops has been given to her, and this is her clinical picture. Our next case: 25-year male with recurrent red eyes since the last 10 years, and this is what we are seeing in the clinical picture: marginal keratitis with uh, uh, corneal neovascularization and conjunctival inflammation. Our third patient, a 25-year male, again with recurrent red eyes for the past two years. So, is it a case of mistaken blepharitis entity? Is it to, to uh, most commonly it would look like a staphylococcal marginal keratitis? But why are we talking about this? Because the patient has had uh, multiple recurring episodes uh, since two years, since ten ten years. Hence, we must consider other causes. Classically, a textbook description of staphylococcal anterior blepharitis would be yellow crusty collarettes on the lashes, whereas in demodex we see as the arrow points clear gelatinous waxy debris at and surrounding the base of eyelashes. This is called cylindrical dandruff, and this is pathognomonic of demodex blepharitis. Not essentially that a uh, uh, that in the absence of cylindrical dandruff we would not be diagnosing demodex. but if there is a cylindrical dandruff it is pathognomonic of demodex so i show you a small video of dr geeta from my mentor in shankara netralia how do we look for demodex we epilate the eyelashes two non adjacent eyelashes from each of the two lids uh, is epilated put on a slide uh, a cover slip put on top of it a drop of fluorescein is uh, placed this fluorescein helps to uh, dissolve the cylindrical dandruff or whatever debris and then it is seen on the microscope we start with low magnification 10x in which it is easily visible these are some of my own pictures which i have captured from the with my cell phone of my own patients uh, like i mentioned there are two species which inhabit human beings demodex folliculorum folliculorum which is slightly longer 0.3 to 0.4 mm in length and demodex brevis which is slightly shorter 0.15 to 0.2 mm in length it's invisible to the naked eye it has a semi transparent elongated body that consists of two fused segments eight short segmented legs are attached to the first body segment and the tail behind it the eight legs of this mite move at a rate of 8 to 16 mm per hour from a study from south india the incidence of demodex infestation was seen in 90% cases of anterior blepharitis 60% in mgd cases and 90% in mixed blepharitis 18% in the control subjects like dr ahuja had also mentioned this the rate of demodex infestation increases with age being observed in 84% of the population at age 60 years 100% of those above 70 years he also discussed the three basic patho uh, pathogenic mechanisms of lid irritation which is the primary symptom of demodex infestation 
first is direct damage that is the biting apparatus of the mite alone the second is lipolytic enzymes produced by the parasite to digest the sebum and by the accumulation of parasite excreta resulting in blockage of sebaceous glands that may lead to infection or the stimulation of the host humoral responses and cell mediated reaction third is secondary or concomitant microbial peritis the microorganisms most commonly streptococci and staphylococci they may cling to the integuments of the parasite and this is the secondary vector damage like it acts like a vector the demodex induced changes to the cornea is basically a spillover of inflammation from anterior and posterior blepharitis it causes superficial it may cause superficial punctate keratopathy corneal neovascularization stromal and marginal infiltration flectinular lesions superficial opacities nodular scars limbitis and perforation from a very recent published paper uh, on demodex keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis a retrospective review of 14 patients the median age was 27 years range being 11 to 39 years the symptom duration was 2 months to 20 years rosacea in three patients the common misdiagnosis was allergic conjunctivitis and viral keratitis cylindrical dandruff was present in only six patients the rest had clean eyelashes inferior superior vascularization was seen corneal scars in 12 there were four steroid related complications all except one responded to tea tree oil and 13 were off steroids after 3 weeks of starting treatment the treatment given was 50% tea tree oil lid scrubs along with two doses of oral ivermectin besides demodex has also been implicated in the causation of calasia pterygium recurrens rosacea facial where the demodex is inhabiting the facial skin floppy eyelid syndrome also eyelid basal cell carcinomas the treatment of demodex consists of weekly lid scrub with 50% tea tree oil diluted in olive oil this tea tree oil comes from uh, it's a natural uh, essentials oil steam distilled from australian native plant melaleucia alternifolia along with this weekly lid scrub we give daily tea tree oil applied to the eyelid in the form of scrubs using eyelid wipes which has 7% tea tree oil or foam which has uh, 2% tea tree oil these tea tree oil treatments for at least two demodex mite life cycles we give that is approximately 6 weeks in order to ensure adequate killing of the parasite the terpenon terpenin for all is the most active tea tree oil molecular compound against demodex oral ivermectin two doses 200 microgram per kilogram one week apart is also given for treatment so uh, tea tree oil besides this also has antibacterial properties against methicillin resistant staph aureus antiviral herpes simplex and influenza virus anti fungal candida albicans anti inflammatory properties as well so what does it do it basically interacts with the cell membrane of the bacteria and the fungus disrupting it causing altered permeability leakage of cytosolic contents and inhibition of respiration leading to bacterial or fungal death also it stimulates the human monocytes to release tnf alpha interleukins Uh, that is responsible for the anti-inflammatory action, and superoxide production decreases, uh, decrease in the reactive oxygen species, and that is responsible for the antioxidant action. The tea tree oil stays long on the skin for four hours. And this is a short video again by Dr. Geeta showing in-office tea tree oil treatment of Demodex, where tea tree oil and olive oil is mixed in equal ratio
This tea tree oil is easily available from body shop, khadi, and etc. stores. After instilling a drop of paracaine with a cotton tipped applicator, it's gently scrubbed along the lid margins. Fortunately, uh, most of the time we don't need to resort to such extensive uh, lid scrubs. We, the, with the easy availability of Oculeaf uh, eyelid wipes and Oculeaf uh, lid cleansers, we can give them uh, to our patients uh, with the instruction of using it twice daily. And this helps tremendously. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jaya. Uh, Jaya, uh, a question from the audience. If you fi do find Demodex, you have found it, how will you further counsel the patients? And do you counsel only the patients, family members? Is it likely to be in the family? Uh, so it can be. Yeah. Yes, sir, it can be. It can be like it can be contagious. That is definitely there. But even if I, in my practice, even if I don't see demodex, even if I have not isolated, but it's a chronic recurring problem, then I do give them these eyelid wipes and cleansers. I do advise lid hygiene with the eyelid wipes and cleansers. How would you decide which patient goes in only for the oculif lid wipes and for whom you have to prepare this? Olive oil and 50% TTO. Uh, Sir, so if we have isolated the demodex uh, mite, if we have isolated and the patient, the red eye is not going with the steroid antibiotic uh, combinations, then I would like to give them the uh, in-office uh, tea tree oil scrubs. So in, in effect, you will try the oculi first and if it doesn't work and you're sure of your diagnosis, then you would go for the 50%. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Okay. 